Hello, people. This is Loud Styles, and you've just entered my world, Loudon's world. I'm an Xbox 360. Da 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 faggot. Okay, it's been a while since I've done a Loudon's World, so here we go. Today's topic is going to be on WWE and TNA and my thoughts on the new year for WWE and TNA. 2011 is here, and well, hopefully in 2011, one of these two companies is going to have a major change around to the point where the product will be good. But don't hold your breath because, unfortunately, the management of both TNA and WWE were no good entertainment if it bit them in their soul-sucking ass. Jesus fucking Christ! When you think of TNA, you think of the three evils that are in the same room. You think of Bischoff, you think of Hogan, and you think of Russo. Hogan doesn't know how to run a company. Bischoff should never touch a company, and Russo should just stop being in the wrestling business, period, because he's killing it just like how David Arquette killed the World Heavyweight Championship. And, you know, the first couple of times, I mean, when Hogan first came in, I was like, okay, this is going to be interesting. Maybe, you know, Hogan would do something good for TNA. And it's like, you know, my only thing is I hope to God he doesn't wrestle. But when I see the when I saw the things he was doing, like he was going to war with WWE and all this other bullshit, I was like, fucking retard. Like that that just killed it right there. And then saying that and now he feels like now that he's in TNA, TNA is gonna mean something now. I was like, fucker, TNA meant a hell of a lot more when you weren't around. Even when you had Dixie Carter run the company, who is just as oblivious as the WWE creative team on what is entertaining, what will get over, TNA had better matches on pay-per-view and on television than you had. The only reason that TNA gets these bad ratings and WWE gets these good ratings is because you have fucking kiddies watching the show and they and those kids really don't pay attention. It's a kid show now. You have the kiddies all watching the show and you know, the matches are fucking abysmal and half assed. But when you turn on TNA you see pure wrestling. It is wrestling. And here's my other thing. Everybody's blaming WWE on the PG thing. I think to be honest with you, the PG rating doesn't mean shit. Just because the show is PG does not give you the right to half-ass a fucking match. To put on really bad matches. PG don't mean shit. Because let me tell you something. There's this little company in Reading, Pennsylvania called Chakar. And it is a PG wrestling company. And they put on blockbuster fucking matches every damn time they enter a building. PG rating don't mean shit. It does not give you the right to half-ass a match. Because Jakar puts on better freaking matches. And they're PG. Just had to say that. And with TNA, it's like... You got Bischoff, and you got Russo, and you got Hogan. And Hogan should just be a spokesperson for TNA. He should never show his face on television. They're doing that now, and that's like, good. You know, Hogan doesn't come nowhere near on television, thank God. But you still got Bischoff on television. And it's like, why? And, again, it's a case of the young talent does not get pushed because they're too busy getting all these guys that were ex-WWE superstars or, or just these 50-year-old over-the-hill guys that are still talking about shit that happened a long ass time ago and living in the fucking past but the only thing TNA's got good going forward is that you still have good matches 
you have the machine guns having a good match with, with Generation Me. You got all these young guys, you know, just doing great. But it's like the storylines are so freaking horrible. The gimmick ideas that people bring up, like, why the fuck would you do a Jersey Shore gimmick? You're doing the same shit you did in WCW. You're putting a gimmick because, you know, it's it's popular in today's media and you want to, like, be all hip and, hip and trendy with the in-crowd, which fails miserably. Here's my improvements for TNA. Get rid of Hogan, Bischoff, and Rusev. Let Scott Levy, Raven, let, Re let Raven be on the creative side of TNA. Let Raven write storylines. Let Paul Heyman or Jim Ross run the company. Somebody who at least knows what the fans really want. Not somebody that says that he knows what the fans really want and just feeds a lot of bullshit. No. Get somebody that really knows the damn company. Get somebody that knows the ins and outs of the company. Knows it. And also get somebody that's not a that's not in fucking Hollywood and is a entertainer and doesn't know what rest what are the fans really want and he's just pushing his stupid half ass ideas out. No. Get somebody that really knows the business. That's all I'm saying for TNA. My genitals itch. Then you get to WWE and they're now pushing a lot of guys that, you know, should have been pushed a while ago. Um, Dolph Ziggler is now in the hunt for the World Heavyweight Championship. That's going to be interesting. On Raw's side, you know, Miz is WWE Champion. Everybody freaking hates the idea that Miz is WWE Champion. I freaking like the idea that the man's the champion because it's been a long time coming. I think it was the right time for him to be WWE Champion. I really do. Um, He's proven already that he's a legit competitor. He's proven many times that he's gotten into this business not because he was a reality TV star, but it took him three years just to get into WWE. He's proven that already. It's said in interviews. It's been proven. And honestly, the guy's so humble and happy that he's the champ. And, you know, that's cool. It's great that he, you know, did all that. Um, It's good that they finally are pushing Morrison to WWE Championship glory. Because now the, uh, the foundation of Raw has changed. Usually it was Cena, Orton, Sheamus, and all that. Now it's now it's pretty much Orton. It's Miz, Orton, Morrison, Sheamus, if they ever you know want to do it, do that again. Uh, but um, to be honest with you, I do not want to see Sheamus as a WWE champion. You know because the only reason he even got that push to my mind is he's Triple H's workout buddy. Um. Like I said, they're pushing a lot of guys. They're pushing a lot of young guys now. You know, I was watching SmackDown, and I was pretty shocked to see that Dolph Ziggler was um, is the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. That's going to be a hell of a match. Dolph Ziggler, Edge. I can't wait to see that. I'm interested to see how that will work out. Although, you know, I honestly think Vicky Guerrero should never be on t television again. Uh, excuse me for being brutal, but every time Vicky Guerrero shows her face, a Guerrero rolls over in his grave. WWE, even though you know they have, they're doing all these, they're doing some some good things. They're pushing some guys that should have been pushed a while ago. It's still stupid that they had to put on half-ass lackluster matches, and it's also stupid that certain guys that should have had a push that needs a push don't get a push. Evan Bourne, who's like out right now. Evan Bourne's been for the company with how long? He still hasn't got like a title push. Like a freaking U.S. title push. An Intercontinental Championship push. Something. Because he's too small. That's why. And that's bullshit. I think it needs to be said that the size of somebody should not fucking matter. It should be what skill he has in the ring and the charisma that he can bring. It's obvious that he gets over and he gets bigger pops than most of the fucking people on Raw. And, you know, I think it's just stupid that you don't give this guy a decent run. 
like you tease people you you get them to win matches over big name stars but then it's like oh well we're just gonna die it down a little bit and let them get squashed that's so stupid and then you know there's Daniel Bryan <laughs> everybody's most hated fucking guy in the world for what reason I don't know um Daniel Bryan is the US champion he's doing quite well for himself and a lot of people say that he's 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 pretty damn close for being a uh, w for going for the WWE Championship. Um, I wish that would happen. I could see it happening in the near future. I could see Daniel Bryan being a WWE Champion, and if he does become WWE Champion, then this shit will change a lot more. Cause it, cause it's already changing over the fact that the Miz is the WWE Champion, but it's gonna change a hell of a lot more if Daniel Bryan ever gets the belt. Cause now it's like okay. A pure wrestler. A pure wrestler. One of the best why well, one of the best technical wrestlers, the best submission artist. He's now, you know, WWE champion. Like like Chris Benoit all over again. Um But WWE is like doing good. The problem is with WWE is that the creative team is shit. I hate seeing a scripted I hate seeing scripted promos because it's like you don't even you have to feel what the guy is feeling and it's kind of hard trying to you know get into the dude's emotion when it feels scripted and it's so bad that they know it's scripted and the guys watching at home can feel it being scripted that's another thing But, you know, that's how it is. So, problems with, so, things that need to be improved on both companies. Uh, well, let's see. Honestly, the both of them need to start, need to start looking at some, uh, fucking independent tapes. They, they need to. WWE and TNA needs to sit down, or anybody reasonable in WWE and TNA, they need to sit down, go out somewhere, Buy a couple of ROH Chikara tapes, some ROH or some Chikara DVDs, and take notes on how to work a crowd, on how to make the product better. Because MMA is straight up kicking both of their asses, and they're letting it happen. I'm not saying that MMA is bad, I fucking love MMA. But MMA is kicking both companies' asses because they know what the fans really want and they know how to put on a damn show. WWE are just a bunch of lazy fuckwits that that think that everything that they write is going to be good. When the problem is, half the fan base of WWE are dull-minded, nitwitted, and are just brain dead. And and apparently there are a bunch of ten-year-olds that really don't know what they like and they only like John Cena because he's muscular and he's being forced down their throats every day and you know when you eat the same type of shit every freaking week you're gonna start having a taste for it TNA they just need to TNA they just need to change the management up period they need to get rid of Hogan they need to get rid of Bischoff they should ne never let Dixie Carter run the fucking company if Jeff Jarrett runs it back I don't give a shit let Jeff Jarrett run it at least Jarrett knows how to put on some... At least Jarrett can, like, get some guys to put on a good show with. Or better yet, let Jim Ross run the company. Yeah, let Jim Ross have creative control. Let Raven have creative control. Let Paul Heyman have creative control. Because that man could put on five good matches in his sleep compared to the bullshit Vince Russo's been trying to spew out of people since WCW. Alright guys, I'm done. I know that was a long ass rant, but you know since I can uh, go over the 15 minute limit, I'm using it to my advantage. I'm Lounge Styles, I'm over, I'm out, and I am gone. TNA, WWE, I expect some improvements. Because as a wrestling fan, I'm tired of seeing the same old shit. I really am. Apps are so overused, why not spice it up with a little G's? I'll spice up your face with an F! Okay, okay, enough with the F's already. Like, take your medication or something. Speaking of medication... I knew it! I sold it for ten bananas!